This is Terry Davis for Pocketnow.com and this is part one of the video review for the UK SIM Free Palm Centro. Now I picked this device up about a week or so ago at the UK launch and I've been using it ever since and I must admit I am really impressed with the phone. It's small, it's a nice form factor. They refer to it as a candy bar because it is not much bigger than a Mars bar. It fits nicely in your hand, it fits nicely in your pocket. I even carry this in my shirt pocket and, and it, it's not as if it weighs it down or anything, it's great. Now let me run around the device and I will show you some of the hardware features that it's got in part one and that will probably give you some idea as to why I like it so much. Starting with the top, there's a switch which is common to quite a lot of palm devices and it's a mute and vibrate switch and you switch it from one side to the other and it mutes the device and switches it into vibrate mode. Now that's brilliant. Why more phones don't have that, I have no idea. When you're in a meeting and your phone goes off, you slip your hand in your pocket, you flick it across, and that's it. That's all you need to do. You don't need to take it out of your, out of your pocket. With my, with my Titan, if it goes off and I've forgotten to mute it first, I have to fiddle around, switch it on, I have to, I have to tap the icon and, and mute the device and then switch it off. And with this, it's, it's as simple as putting my hand in my pocket. It's great. Really, really common sense device, that. On the side here, they've got the infrared sock. Uh, adapter, the infrared socket, which again I, I said I'm, I don't know what the thinking is behind putting this on here because I don't really know anybody that uses it. It's much much more and more phones now are phasing out the infrared in favour of Bluetooth 2 and I wonder if they'd have lost this, could they have spent that money that, that in the cost on upgrading from Bluetooth 1.2, which this is, to a Bluetooth 2 chip, uh, which would have given things like A2DP, but they obviously had their own reasons. Just below there we have the micro SD socket. Now they've limited this to four gigabytes, which again is I think a little bit strange considering the fact that this is aimed at a younger market where they're used to having media on their phone, be it movies, music, photos, videos, that kind of thing. I find that four gigabytes runs out very quickly, especially if you're on the move as well. I mean, I, I watch movies and things on the train when I'm traveling to work and having it reduced to four gigabytes from what I'm used to in my Titan, eight gigabytes is, is a, a bit of a, a backward step for me. But anyway, it's, it's still, it's still four gigs still sufficient for, for, for most people's general usage. Now, I, you can see I've got some thumbnail, but getting this thing out is actually quite difficult, and it's a little bit fiddly. You have to poke your th thumbnail in there, and then and then pull the flap down, and then you can just see inside. There is the socket. Now, trying to get that out on a train station is to switch it for another four gig one with music or something else on is is not the easiest thing to do, and you're liable to use, lose it. So the easiest thing to do is just slip the back off there, and then you can see you can access much more easily and it just clicks in. Once got the back off um, there you can see the battery it's 1150 milliamp hour battery and just below that is the SIM card. Okay just pop the back on here. So just moving on to the back of the device here you can see the camera lens there which is a 1.3 megapixel camera which does still photos and video and as you've seen in the example that I put in my review, it's a fairly good quality picture with the two times digital zoom. Next to that is the speaker, which is used for media playback and for speakerphone, which is it's a really good quality speaker. It's 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 clear and it's and it's fairly loud too. In the top corner on the back there we have the stylus. It's a full length plastic stylus which just slots in the corner there because it is a 320 by 320 touch screen as I've said and I must admit I haven't used the stylus very much because the configuration of the keyboard and the keys is so well well laid out well thought out that I, I've at times even forgotten it. it's it's a touch screen phone and I've, I've relied on the touch screen very little which is says a lot about my Titan because I use the Titan's touch screen an awful lot and perhaps that's because the d-pad being at the bottom makes it difficult to, to use and then constantly switch it around to flip out the keyboard this is 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 great the bottom of the device is the one thing that I don't really like there's a series of proprietary connectors as you can see that's a standard connector that's 2.5 millimeter jack plug which will take stereo headphones or the mono headphone that's supplied next to it though there's a proprietary charge and sync inline 
connector. Now, there are enough manufacturers out there at the moment that have managed to figure out how to make a phone use a mini USB socket, which will both charge and sync from the same thing. So, why on earth other manufacturers can't do it, I don't know. Come on, let's, you know, stop doing this. Everyone's got loads of, of USB sockets lying around the house, and they might as well all be standard. Um, the only reason I can think of doing it is laziness, or perhaps there's plenty of profit in selling on cables. Next to there you can see the power connector which is for the wall socket which again is a proprietary connector. It's, it's not something I've ever seen before. It's a square bizarre configuration and I've got nothing like it around the house. Now there's no reason to have that. It could be integrated as one, as one piece. It, it just takes a bit of thought. Now if I can just switch it on and I'll show you the keyboard in action and I'll give, probably give you some idea then as to, as, to, as to how it does actually work in practice. So if I switch it on and I'm in the memos there. So if I just try to type a quick message here and I'm going to see how well I can do it. And what if I typed? It says, Terry says hi to all our readers. Now there's no spell checker on there, there's nothing. I just typed that straight away. Now I felt my, my thumb hit a couple of keys a couple of times, but it's still accurate enough to pick up exactly what I wanted to say. And I'm really impressed with that. It's great for typing text messages or for jotting notes just like this. Really good, well thought out, well, very usable. So that's part one. In part two what I want to do is show you the media capabilities of the phone but this is the end of the first part of the video review for the UK SIM free Palm Centro. Thanks.